Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning here at uh, Celebration Lutheran Church. We are so glad you are here. I'm Pastor Kyle, and we welcome you into this worship together as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. A warm welcome to folks gathered here in person, and a warm welcome to folks joining us online. We're glad you are with us, too. Uh, welcome into this, this time and space. Uh, it's, it's good to be gathered together. Just a couple quick announcements uh, uh, for folks here in in person, uh, hopefully you grab the bulletin on the way in that will lead and guide us as per our tradition here and um, direct your attention to page uh, 18 and 19. Um, we are kind of, we're continuing through with adult education and Sunday school through the beginning of June and so we're working through a class on fear in adult form so we encourage you to join us for that conversation um, and also um, uh, Sunday school continues. Um, we'll go through that Second weekend in June, just so folks are aware of that, and then we'll switch to our summer schedule. Um, page 19, also the top of page 19, we're still looking for folks to volunteer with worship. Um, the way to sign up for worship is, um, there's a link for that in the uh, weekly calendar. So if you'd like to help, we'd love to have you help. Um, we need you, and so we put that on your hearts and minds, and we're also grateful for folks that continue to serve in that way. Um, yes, Kim has an announcement. I, I didn't forget. I was wondering if there was one more thing I have, and uh, I don't. So um, I'll invite Kim to come up to share a little bit about um, last night's event. As you can still see, we're, we still have some fun decorations up. So thanks, Kim, for sharing a little bit. Oh, well, I, can't, I can't thank you enough. It, we... It was a wildly successful evening, um, so much so that I want to give you some interesting statistics. Um, <clears throat> we had four auction, remember we did this in the middle of a pandemic, <laughs> right? We had four auction committee members impacted by COVID um, during this process. We had one committee member with a broken clavicle. We had four committee members missing the night of the auction. We were missing four of our um, biggest participants the night of, people who come and, and like to donate lots of money to our event. Um, we only had three youth participating, which meant we had a lot less parent volunteers. Um, we had, and despite all of that and all of the challenges, I believe that it was the second or third highest grossing auction ever. Um, so thank you. Um, we Preliminary numbers, I'll tell you a funny story. I was um, at the first planning committee meeting this year. I said, you know, I would really love to raise $10,000. And everybody on the committee laughed at me and said, we're in the pandemic, Kim. Um, and I said, okay, I'm hoping for five. 10 would be amazing. And they're like, okay, whatever. We raised $10,000 last night. So thank you all for your help and support of our youth. There are some people I have to thank personally. Cheryl White, Cheryl Wiedersfan, Susan Brown, and their husbands. That is your decorating committee. They did an amazing job. They always do. Bettina and Andrew Eklund work um, tirelessly behind the scenes. Ruthie White and my parents, Rainey and Denise Naden, covered the kitchen last night for the first time ever. And I think it went okay. Um, we will always miss Matt and Jesse. Hopefully they'll be back next year. But I think it worked out very well. So I'm very grateful for them for stepping up. Um, Steve, my husband, for emceeing. Joe Olson and Sherilyn Lindley, they procured over 90 items for us this year. That's huge, and it was their first time, so they did a great job. Uh, Rob Lightbody worked behind the scenes, and then, of course, there's Nathan, who donated tons of homemade items. Um, I think he had one of the highest grossing items last night. Um, his art is fantastic. He loves our kids, and he does so much for our youth. So thank you, Nathan. So thank you all for participating. It was a great time. And if you didn't come this year, hopefully we'll see you next year. Thank you. Yes. 
spill the words out of my mouth. Thank you, Kim. We appreciate you too and all that you do for us. So um, wonderful news and great way to celebrate, especially after two years off. Um, are there any prayers that we can begin with uh, to uh, offer as part of our worship this morning? Any prayers? Yes, John. What's his first name? Ken. Ken. Okay, sorry, I didn't hear that. Yeah, and just a, a quick word about COVID, too, that I want to lift up. I spoke with uh, Jesse Weber yesterday, and it seems like COVID has hit really hard their, their family. Um, uh, the two boys have COVID. Matt has COVID. Uh, Patty Freeze has COVID. And Jean Millison, which is Patty's mother, uh, has COVID and is not doing well. She is in the ICU, and so we will lift our prayers up as um, we hope that... Uh, um, that they can care for her and she can rally and return home. Um, so hitting their, their family really hard. Um, also another gene as well, Jean Walker, for those folks uh, that knew that she, she went into the hospital last uh, Saturday, last Friday, last Saturday, was hoping to come home this week, but just hasn't, hasn't gotten better. And so she is still in the hospital. So we will pray for Jean, Jean Walker as well. So two genes uh, really not doing well in the hospital and I'm going to keep those folks in our prayers and um, prayers for healing. So if there's no other prayers this morning, oh, yes, Gail. I'm sorry, I can't hear. Oh, your father passed away. I'm so sorry. Okay. Sure, yes. What's your father's first name? Anthony. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, Gail's father passed away, Anthony, and um, so she just asked prayers for her family, her sister Jean. As they all uh, mourn, uh, mourn Anthony's loss, and also um, lifted up the good folks of Buffalo, New York, as they, uh, as once again we read about violence in our streets, um, sort of a senseless act of violence rooted in hate, and uh, so we will pray for uh, fine people of Buffalo as they grieve today. Um, is there any other prayers this morning? Prayers for Ukraine as well, yeah. War in Europe. It's good to be uh, gathered together, and certainly we'll lift up prayers of thanksgiving for uh, the celebration of our youth. That is a hopeful note this day, um, and also um, being together as community. So we'll take just a brief moment to quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship. All right, the congregation, please stand as you are comfortable and able. We'll begin this morning with our call to worship and continue with our confession of sin. This Easter season, there is good news, and we continue to proclaim, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And gracious God, may your spirit breathe upon this place this day and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst Cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. And gracious God, you are our beginning. You are our end, the alpha and omega of our lives. You are our good shepherd, our guiding voice, and we give thanks. And we worship you. Amen. And so drawn to Christ this day and seeking God's great abundance, let us take a moment to confess our sin before God and before one another. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called to us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all of creation. Amen. People of God, hear this good news, hear this word of grace, that in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for, for our sins, and for His sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. O oh Lord God, you teach us that without love our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your Spirit, we may know goodness and peace through your Son, 
Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Invite the congregation to be seated. Invite our young children to come forward for our children's sermon this morning. So I think we just have Olivia. Oh, I appreciate Ashley coming. Okay. Well, I had a fun thing planned, but we needed more kids, so I think we're just going to talk about our story. Thanks for coming up, Mom. We appreciate you. So I had, well, today I just want to talk about, oh, here's an old children's sermon. <laughs> Dust that one off sometime. I had a fun activity planned, but we need a few more kids, and since we're a little light this morning, I thought I'd talk to us about... The Last Supper, Olivia, if you can see, and I'm sure, Ashley, you learned all about the Last Supper in Confirmation in Sunday School. Olivia's holding her eyes. She doesn't want to see. No, I, well, I know that word, no, quite a bit from a young child I know. Well, today we hear a story about the Last Supper, and the Last Supper, Olivia, is when Jesus' disciples, they all got together with Jesus right before his trial and crucifixion, which are big fancy words, but he gives them uh, the greatest commandment. He gives them the new commandment, and that commandment is love. In fact, where am I? I have some big pieces of paper that we were going to have a little fun with. Jesus tells us about love. So Jesus and love are really, really important. That's this new commandment. So on the day right before Jesus says goodbye to his disciples, he gives them a commandment to love. How would you describe love? How do we describe love? Maybe Ashley can help. That's what we were going to have a little bit of fun with. Okay, you adore someone, and you might not adore someone, and you still have to love them. Yeah, so that's kind of the tricky thing. Um, but, um, yeah, it's a very, very powerful thing, and sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes we are called to love people we don't want to. But where does that love come from? Where does love first come from? What's that? Your feet? Like your, your feet? Why do you say feet? I'm so, I'm, I'm curious. Because why not? Okay. Well, the, 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 well, it could come from feet, um, it could, but it comes from Jesus comes from Jesus, that, that love, that love comes from God's love first. That's how we're able to love people is it comes from God. And so it's, um, it's a good reminder, even though love seems like a simple thing, sometimes it's not so simple when we, we have to live it out in the world. So that's, that's our message today. Can we fold our hands and bow our heads and let us pray? And I invite the congregation to pray too. So let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your love. Help us to take in your love and share it with the world. Share it with all. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming up. Good to see you this morning. And God bless you all. And thanks, Ashley. And use those feet to love. reading for today is from Acts chapter 11 verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by four corners, and it came close to me. I looked at it closely. I saw four-footed animals 
beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. And at that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be served. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave, gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given to even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Here ends the reading. Let the congregation please stand for our God. What a powerful passage that is from Acts. I'm not going to preach on that today, but I want to put that in reference. What a turning point that is for the church. God spoke to Peter and told him to show no partiality to those pork-eating, uncircumcised, pagan Gentiles. And thank God Peter didn't listen, because that's why we're here today. And it was a pivotal point to begin that outreach to people that are different than us. And I think that sets the stage for our reading from John's Gospel. John chapter 13, beginning in verse 31. When he had gone out... Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in Him. If God has been glorified in Him, God will also glorify Him in Himself, and will glorify Him at once. Jesus continued, little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, but as I, as I spoke earlier, so I now say to you again, where I am going, you cannot come. But I give you a new commandment to live by, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Here ends our gospel reading. I invite the congregation to please be seated. I'd like to begin with one of my of my favorite cartoon strips, which is Peanuts. And there was one that I that always hung on, that I always kept at my, uh, kind of my um, little work area in my little, very little uh, seminary apartment. I always kept it by me because it made me smile. Sort of remind me about the important things in life. And there's a resolute Lucy, just kind of sitting, standing like this, frowning. You can't see because I'm wearing a mask. But she was frowning and, you know, brr. And Charlie Brown is like, lighten up, Lucy. You need to love a little bit. Love the world. Let a little love in so you can, so you can love the world a little bit. And she, she said, she turns around, she whips around, and it kind of knocks Charlie Brown back. And she's like, you know, it's not the world that I don't love. It's the people I can't stand. So peace out. 
It always makes me smile. And I can't help but think that this is where we find ourselves this morning, loving one another. And I imagine that many of us at some point in our lives resemble that remark from Lucy. Perhaps that's what makes it so good. We love the world, it's the people we can't stand. And yet today Jesus calls us to love one another. And this day we're reminded that no matter how much we give to the church, how many times we teach Sunday school or sing in the choir or attend worship or serve the church in all its many ways, whether on council or in worship, all those things are wonderful and faithful. But if we don't have love, well, then we've missed the point of the gospel. We've missed it. The object of our faith is love. And in today's gospel, it tells us of the new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. We're, we're back into the setting of Jesus' last supper, the night of his betrayal. Just Monday, Thursday, we had the same text. It wasn't that long ago. Didn't we already have Easter? Didn't we already go through this? Yet here we are once again reminded of, of love. But maybe you're like me and you're wondering, what's the old commandment? Why do we need a new one now anyways? And why here, especially on Jesus' last night? And the answer I would like to propose this day lies in the first words of our lesson. The first words of our lesson, it said, when he had gone out. Now, who is he? Well, it's Judas. It's Judas. Jesus' betrayer, he's gone out to be set things in motion of the betrayal, to do his awful deed, to sell Jesus out. But now that G Judas has left the table, I believe everything is different. Everything has changed once Judas leaves that dinner table. Jesus is about to go to the cross, as we know, and Jesus is about to reveal to us the love and forgiveness and grace of God. And so he gives us a new commandment that we should enter and receive that love and then share it with the world. But everything, I believe everything has changed with Judas leaving. Because now, now there's a test case. Now there's an extreme test case for this love of Christ. Will this love be extended even to Judas? To the Judases of the world? I don't know if you're like me, but have you ever wondered whether upon hearing Jesus' new commandment that did any of the other disciples go out into the night looking for Judas? You know, to extend that love to him? Did anyone fear for him, miss him, or even try? Even after he brings the, the soldiers to Gethsemane, where the confrontation happens, did anyone grab Judas and say, hey man, what are, what are you doing? Come back to us. Try to talk him out of the shame, the anger, resentment, whatever he was feeling. Now, before we go any farther down this road in this sermon, I need to take us, I need to give us a quick aside, and I hope you'll bear with me because we're in John's gospel, but we do, we do know what happens to Judas, but it's not in John's gospel. We get Judas, we get more about Judas in Matthew's gospel and the book of Acts. Now, Matthew states that learning that Jesus was going to be crucified, Judas was overcome with remorse and attempted to return the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest. But they, they don't accept them because it's, well, it's blood money. And so Judas throws them on the ground and he leaves. And afterwards, he commits suicide by hanging himself. And Acts is a little bit different, where Judas then takes the money and he uses it to buy a field. But of course, he falls into the field, and as the scriptures say, he burst open and all his bowels gushed out. And that's a, believe it or not, that's a direct quote from Acts. What's interesting, though, about the discrepancy between these two accounts, and this is, I'm going even deeper into this hole about Judas, is that this has been a serious challenge for the support of biblical inerrancy. I even got reading about C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis used these two different accounts of Judas saying that this problem of different accounts of Judas, he used that to reject the idea that every statement in the Bible is historical truth. I couldn't believe that. But 
That's a whole separate issue. And like I said, this is a separate aside, so I hope you're hanging with me. But it's an interesting historical note about the life of Judas who we never seem to talk about. Because if we go back to John's gospel, we're left wondering about Judas. And my guess is that no one in John's gospel ever found him, even if someone tried. And to this day, I would argue, no one has seemed to find Judas from John's gospel. It would seem he's still out there. Wandering somewhere in the night, forsaken by every generation of disciples since that holy and ancient Thursday. Think about it. Every time we gather around this table, the sacred meal, we commemorate Judas's sin, his awfulness, his terrible behavior. We say, on the night in which Jesus was betrayed. We speak of his sin, but we do not name him. We have not searched for him, and we have not found him, and his place at the Lord's table remains empty. Of course, if you go to Acts, you do know he is replaced. But like I said, we're in John's gospel this morning. And the reason I'm, the reason this is, I'm, I, I am where I am, is because I think we know this kind of pain in our lives. We are no strangers to such brokenness either. I imagine that in every generation, We've known the pain of broken churches. We all bear the name of Christ, but there are some with whom we cannot share this space with, and certainly some whom we cannot share this table with. And our families too. We know the pain and the shame, the hurt of the places, the grief at the table where no one sits anymore. We ache and sob over friendships that have been put down, have been put to death with hostility, anger, and bitter words. For each of us, I imagine at least one Judas wanders out in the night unforgiven. And maybe even from another perspective, if I can, maybe each one of us is a Judas, slipping about in the shadows, unforgiven, unloved, and alone. How shall we love one another? It's this context in which Jesus gives us this command. And it's Jesus himself because the very love we need, if we're to love in this new way, is given to us by the gift of the one who commands its practice. Because if you go back, you paid attention to that first part of our, of our, of our scripture, Jesus' identification happens the moment Judas departs into the night. In John's gospel, the glorification, remember all that glorified in himself, he'll be glorified. That's code word for crucifixion. Jesus will be glorified and his father will be glorified in him when he loses his life, when he gives it up. And then and only then comes the glorification because that true, because love, It's truly giving himself away by losing himself. Genuine love always means losing oneself in another's arms, in another's laughter, in another's tears. But even more, to love is to lose oneself and therefore find oneself. To find one's true humanity. Because that's the love of Christ. He lost himself. He gave himself up for us only then to be glorified by God. And the same is true for us. That in losing ourselves, the risen Christ promises us that we shall find ourselves. We shall find our real selves, loved, forgiven, seated at the table. Probably seated next to the one who has betrayed me. Or the one who we've betrayed. Because I think, I think what's so powerful about love is the time we find ourselves in. We live in a time where the church is obsessed with the process of faith rather than the object of faith. It feels like over the last 10, 15, 20 years, most of my adult life in the church, the church is obsessed with how to make faith work for people, Right? How do we keep people from leaving the church? How do we keep the kids engaged? How do we get people back after COVID? 
And yet that question, it's a good question, a faithful question, but that question of form and method, we lose the object of faith itself, which should guide the form and process. Doesn't there need to be be a sense in a way to encounter the infinite in the finite, the sacred in the ordinary? And this is where love is so important in our, in our faith lives because the community, the relationships, the depth, that's the place where we encounter the living presence of God. You see, the church, we can't just be a volunteer society that gathers around people's interests. As much as we try, as much as that feels good, we will fail. Because if that's all we do, then we will miss each other's humanity and we will miss the spirit at work in our lives. We will miss the personhood, the body of Christ in community connected to one another. And that's the place where we experience the incarnation, God in the flesh, right? even in a secular age, even in an age of decline. And I don't have a ton of research on this, but when I ask people when they have experienced God real in their lives, usually usually what's described is the process of giving and receiving love. It's giving and receiving ministry. And that's, that's when something transcendent happens. That's when time begins to be filled and heavy and fused with the divine. So will we ever find Judas? Will he ever sit again at his place with his friends and his Lord? Well, only God knows that probably. But we have reason to hope and we have a role to play. So dear celebration. Wherever you find yourself this human morning, the banquet table is set before us. And we remember once again the night, the sacred night of the new commandment. But we also look ahead to the journey of its fulfillment. And in the meantime, we celebrate the joy we have in sitting together, in being together as family, as community, reconciled to each other, having lost part of ourselves, but also having found ourselves in each other. And we can live in hope while waiting for the day, the day when every place at the table will be filled. (laughs) As a child laughs, let us love one another as Christ has loved us. Amen. Invite the congregation to join in a hymn of the day, all love, all, all love, love divine, all loves excelling. Hymn number 631, please stand and sing.
continue this morning with an affirmation of faith. I invite the congregation to join together, united, as we confess and affirm our faith together. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with our prayers this day. Each petition will conclude with the words, God in your mercy. The congregation is invited to pray. Hear our prayer. Let us pray together. Gracious God, loving God, lead us to follow your spirit this day. To follow your spirit rather than our own leanings, our own desires, our own prejudices. Let us be a church that cares for one another. And open us to perceive your gifts in all members, in all people. And gracious God, we pray that you humble us this day. Especially humble the rulers of nations Direct them to people who need their attention most. And turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth and power and control to, to generosity and abundance. And especially this day, we continue to pray for peace in Europe. We hold the people of Ukraine and, and Russia amidst this bloody war. May there be peace. May there be compromise, reconciliation. We pray for possibilities to move forward together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world all around us. Today, and especially here in this area, we're aware of the beautiful sound, the mountains and the forest, Mount Rainier. Urge us toward deliberate care of the world that you have made. Help us be good stewards. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, seek out those who, who mourn, who weep. Be with them while they, wait, while they wait for healing, while they wait for your presence. Set people in their path who can provide care for all in need. Wipe away tears from their eyes. Gracious God, heal those who are ill this day. Uphold your children who cry out to you. Especially this day, we, we pray for Gail and her family, her sister Jean, as they, as they mourn their father's death, Anthony. Gracious God, give them, give them peace. Give them strength. Give them wisdom for the things we don't understand. And may there be strength in this time of trial. May we always hold on to your promises that nothing is able to separate us from your love. Gracious God, we also pray for, we pray for folks who are sick. We pray for Ken who has COVID. We pray for Patty who has COVID, for, for Matt and the Weber boys, Caleb and Isaac. We pray for Jean Hillison who, gracious God, is sick with COVID in the ICU. We pray for strength, for relief, for renewed health. that She might rally, be with the doctors and nurses that care for her. And also, Jean Walker. Gracious God, keep her well. Be with all who will care for her, that she might come home. Have sickness turned into health. Gracious God, we pray for all who, who are sick this day, especially with COVID, as another surge seems to be upon us. Be with our doctors and our nurses and all the folks on the front line who continue to battle this day. Give them, give them strength and courage to weather this storm. And gracious God, we also pray for Buffalo. The community's mourning this day for com people burying their loved one. Gracious God, may we meet this hate and violence with love, with care and compassion, 
May we seek to understand one another, to care for one another. Give us the, give us the faith and courage to do so. And finally, gracious God, we, we have prayers of thanksgiving this day. We give thanks for our young people, our youth, for our congregation that supports them, for the generosity that enables them to, to receive your abundance, to receive your love, and to go out into the world and serve and, and share that with the world. And we give thanks for the incredible support and commitment of this congregation to its young people so that they can live out their faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, it's in your mercy that we call you to respond to these prayers. Hear them and receive them and renew us by your life-giving spirit this day. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. Now it's a lighter Sunday, so see if you can try to pass the peace with everyone. Go.
continue this morning with our offering prayer found on page 13 of your bulletins. Let us pray together. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together at your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. our duty and our great joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself, gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary and Peter and all the witnesses of Christ's resurrection with the earth and the sea and all their creatures, with angels, archangels, cherubim, and seraphim. We praise your holy name and join their unending hymn. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, mighty, and merciful. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. And in great love, you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. He blessed it, then he gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given and broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is part of a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. And remembering, therefore, his life, death, resurrection, we await his coming in glory again. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and all glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, be fed with the meal of God's love. God's love for you. The table is ready. All are welcome.
invite the congregation to please stand as you are comfortable and able as we conclude our worship found on page 16 of your bulletin. Receive this blessing now. May these precious gifts of Christ's body and blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. And now celebration, receive this final blessing, the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy and the Lord look upon you with favor and bring you deep peace this day. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Invite the congregation to join in our closing hymn, Rise Up, O Saints of God. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. My friends, go in peace and let us love one another as Christ loves us. And let us tell what God has done here. Thanks be to God. God bless you all. Amen.